Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how you can sample replace your drum tracks using free features found in Logic Pro. So let's jump in. So here I've got a live recording from a group called Mad Rhythm who are backing up another artist called Tugstar. And for the drums on this session, I kept it fairly simple. We just have four mics. So I've got one for the kick, one for the snare, and two for the overheads. Now when you're recording drums in the studio, you might have as many as 12 or more tracks just for the drums. So normally you'd have at least two tracks for the snare, one for the top snare and one for the bottom. And for the kick, you might have as many as three, one on the inside of the drum, one on the outside, and maybe a sub mic for the kick as well. And then you'll have more tracks for the toms, cymbals, and maybe some room mics as well. So that can add up quick. But like I said, for this session, this was an on-location recording. I only had 16 tracks available to me in total for the entire band. So I just went with four mics for the drum kit for this one. So this is one application where adding some sampling can help make up for those other microphones that I didn't have on the drum kit. Some other reasons why you might choose to sample or replace the drums are, well, maybe the drums just didn't sound very good. It wasn't the proper kit for this type of song, or there was a problem in the recording. You had your gain set too high and there was distortion in the drum mics. Or if the drums sound great on their own, well, then there's no need to sample or replace at all. But if you do find yourself wanting to add some samples, I'm gonna show you how you do that. So I'll play for you what the recording sounds like with just the four mics. I'll mention too, this is the great Richard Brown on drums. So there you go. So those already sound pretty good for just four microphones. But let's see if we can beef it up just a little bit. So to start, I'm gonna add a sample to my kick drum. So I'll just solo that kick so you can hear what the original sounds like. And now to add a sample to this, what we're gonna do is basically convert the audio to MIDI. So to do that, we'll go up here to our track menu and go down to where it says replace or double drum track. And then here under instrument, since we're on our kick drum currently, we'll go here and go to kick. And then you can choose to either double or replace. So I'm gonna double. So I'm gonna keep the original one and just blend in the sample to taste. So if I scroll down here, you'll see my original, and then below it, you'll see the MIDI of the kick of the replacement. And if I double click in here, then you'll see that. And so what you wanna do is make sure that these actually correspond the audio hits. So you'll see here there's the relative threshold. So if I bring this down, you'll see it adds in a whole bunch of kicks, right? So this essentially controls the sensitivity. So if I have it all the way down here, you'll notice it adds in a few more notes that actually shouldn't be there. If I listen back to just the replacement, There's a few extra hits there, because if I listen to the original, you'll hear that it's just a four on the floor kick pattern. So I'm gonna dial this threshold back so that we, those disappear and you can see, I'm gonna keep going until I see that it's just an even. They should all be even. So that looks good. But this will depend on the kick pattern. So in this case, it's just steady quarter notes, so it's actually fairly easy to see. I will mention that this was recorded live and not to a click, so that's why this MIDI isn't lining up right on the grid. So once you've got your threshold set, then we can listen to some different samples here to see what works with our current kick and with just the vibe of the song in general.
So that's a pretty in-your-face sample, but I think I'm gonna use that one and just blend it in slightly to my original one, and you'll see that that's just gonna make it punch just a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK. I'm gonna close my library and close the piano roll. Now, if you wanna go back and change the sample, you can always go to the sampler, go up here, factory, drums, single drums, kick, and then you have your list of all your drum tracks again. So I was gonna go for the acoustic kick 20. So I'll close that. Now, one thing I like to do when I have more than one kick track is to bust those together. So for starters, you'll see that I have all my drums on a track stack. So all my drums are being bussed to this track. If you haven't used track stacks before, I've got a video on that, which I'll link to below. So to root the kick, I'm gonna open up my mixer. Now I created a bus track for my kick drums. So I'm gonna have both of my kick drums sent to this bus. So this is my original kick that I recorded, which you can see is being outputted to bus three. And bus three is this track right here. Input is bus three, so that's getting sent to here. And then this track is outputting to bus one, which is my entire drum track. But my new sample track, on the other hand, currently is just going directly to bus one. So I'm gonna change that to bus three. And so now both of my kicks are going to this one track. So if I solo this, you'll hear both of them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the volume here and I'm just gonna blend this one in with my original kick. So there you go. So it just helps add a little bit of punch and there's also a bit of room sound on that sample as well. So that just helps beef up our kick a little bit. Now let's look at doing the same thing to the snare. So for the snare, it's the exact same process. Select your snare track, go to track, and then go to replace or double drum track. And then now we're gonna have to choose snare as our instrument. And let's open up the snare track in the piano roll to make sure that these line up. So let's just solo both our snare tracks and then we might need to adjust the threshold a little bit, we'll see. So that actually looks pretty good. So we'll just leave the threshold there. We can try a few different snares. Let's um, just solo this snare and listen to, listen to that. Kind of like that snare 17, so let's go with that one. Okay, I'm gonna close my library again. Let's go to our mixer. And I'm gonna do the similar thing for the snare. So I've got my original snare here and then my snare replace. So currently these are both getting sent to bus one, which is my main drum bus, but I'm gonna create a new bus just for the snare. So I'm gonna to go to bus, I'll create a new one. Let's go to bus 14. Send this one to bus 14 as well. And if I go down here, now you'll see it's called aux 15, but the input is bus 14. So I'm just gonna rename this snares. And then the output of this, this is gonna go back to bus one, my drum bus. So 
And now if I want this to appear in my arrange page, which it isn't currently, then I would need to turn on automation. Now you'll see that got moved. And then now I've got it here under my track stack. So that's just to keep things organized a little bit. So I'll just play the original snare for you. And the replacement snare. So I might actually add a little bit of reverb to this, which I already have on the original snare on bus four. So I'm gonna go to bus four and let's just dial in a little bit of that. Okay, that's pretty good. And I might just EQ this just a little bit. Might just roll off a little bit of the low end. Okay, that's good. So now same as we did with the kick, I'll just blend this in with my original snare. So there you go. So that just adds a little bit more body and a little bit of punch as well in that snare. So now let's listen to the entire kit with those samples in and then I'll mute them so you can hear the difference. So there you go. So that just helps fill out the drum kit a little bit. As you saw, you don't need to go overboard with the samples. We're not completely replacing the other sound there. It's just to help augment things just a little bit. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments. And don't forget to download your free Logic Pro X hotkey cheat sheet. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.